That's when the phenothylene indicator does its magic, turning the solution from its initial colorless state to a beautiful pink. This sudden color change signals the endpoint of the titration. For our example, let's a titration in chemistry is a technique used to determine the unknown concentration of a specific analyte in a solution. The technique involves a slow addition of a known concentration of analyte called a titrant to a known volume of another solution of unknown concentration until the reaction reaches a neutralization point, usually indicated by a color change. The most common type of titration is an acid-base titration. These titrations involve the titration of an acid with a base or vice versa. The neutralization endpoint is often determined using a color pH indicator. Let's go through an example. Imagine that you have a bottle of vinegar composed of acetic acid and water, but you're unsure of its acidity. This was due to the lid being off and you don't know how much water has evaporated, thereby increasing the acid's molarity and acidity. How can you find out its concentration? Well, that's where the trusty titration technique steps in. Step one, preparation. You'll need a burette, which is a long graduated tube with a stopcock to precisely measure the volume of a solution. We'll fill the burette with a standard aqueous solution of baking soda, sodium bicarbonate, NaHCO3, a known base at a spe specific concentration, let's say 0.1 molar. In a flask, we'll carefully measure a precise volume of 10 milliliters of your vine vinegar solution, the analyte, to visually detect the neutralization point, we'll add a few drops of phenothylene indicator, which remains colorless in acidic solution, but turns pink when the solution becomes neutral or slightly basic. Step two, the titration. Now the fun begins. You'll slowly open the burette stopcock, allowing 0.1 molar solution of NaHCO3 to drip into the vinegar solution in the flask. After each addition, we'll slur swirl the flask gently to ensure thorough mixing. Keep a watchful eye on the solution. As the NaHCO3 neutralizes the vinegar acidity, the pH will gradually rise. Step 3. Neutralization Endpoint The magic happens when all the acid molecules in the vinegar have reacted with the bicarbonate ions from the NaHCO3. At this point, the solution reaches the equivalence point where it's neither acidic nor basic, but neutral. That's when the phenothylene indicator does its magic, turning the solution from its initial colorless state to a beautiful pink. This sudden color change signals the endpoint of the titration. For our example, let's say we added 1.5 milliliters of the 0.1 molar NaHCO3. Step four, calculations. We've reached the final step. Using the volume of the NaHCO3, solution used at the endpoint and its known concentration, we can calculate the exact amount of acid present in the vinegar sample. This, in turn, tells us the concentration of the vinegar solution. To do this, we use the equation C1V1 equals C2V2, where C1 equals 0.1 molar, V1 equals 1.5 milliliters for the sodium bicarb, C2 is the concentration of the vinegar that we're solving for, and V2 is 10 milliliters. Solving for a C2 looks like 0.1 times 1.5 equals C2 times 10. Therefore, C2 equals 0.1 times 1.5 divided by 10, which equals 0.015 molar. So the molarity of your vin vinegar is 0.015 molar. Remember, we can use the equation C1V1 equals C2V2 because at the neutralization endpoint, Moles are equal for both the NaHCO3 and the vinegar. Voila! With a simple acid-base titration, you've unlocked the mystery of your vinegar's acidity. This technique is not only used in food science, but also in various other fields like environmental analysis, pharmaceutical manufacturing, and even textile dyeing. I hope this example gives you a clear picture of how acid-base titrations work. If you have any further questions, feel free to ask. And if you found value in this video, please like it and let people know about the channel because it really does help spread the knowledge. Based on what you learned, think about the following question. You titrate 8 milliliters of an unknown molarity of aqueous HCl with 50 milliliters of 0.2 molar NaOH for it to reach its neutralization endpoint. What is the molarity of the HCl? much for spending your valuable time learning and bettering yourself. If you like the video and want to learn more, donate, or get tutoring, please check out my website, nocollegeneeded.org. You can use the code NCN 
for 20% off tutoring and any supplemental materials.